Well, good morning once again, and a very warm welcome to our worship today. Whether you're a regular worshipper with us, or an occasional worshipper, or with us maybe for the first time today, we hope you'll find this hour or so of music and words and prayers and images helpful, and that in some way or other, it draws you closer to God. And we hope too that we'll draw us all closer to each other, despite our continuing physical separation. We're very grateful to all those who have uh, helped create this act of worship today and we'll introduce the various participants as we go through but just as always to say a big thank you at the beginning to the people who are filming this week and who will have edited it all together by the time you hear me say this so thanks to James and Colin and Steve once again and thanks of course to God who unites us in his love. And we're going to express our worship to him in words used by the heavenly beings whom John sees praising God in that extraordinary vision that we now know as the book of Revelation. These are words from chapter 4. If you want to join in, the words will be on the screen. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. You are worthy our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, and by your will they are created and have their being. Now we take up that theme of worship as we sing together our first song today, led from their studio in Brownsfield Road by Colin, Annabel and Sophia Bridal. So join in with us, the words again beyond the screen as we praise God, in the words of bless the Lord, O my soul, and what a powerful name. Thank you. 
Well, thank you very much indeed for that uh, music, folks. That was great. And now, once again, uh, there's been plenty to thank God for uh, this week. And as always, some of the congregation have sent in messages and photos and video clips and so on of the things that they're particularly grateful for. So let's have a look at those now before we pray together. So let's pray. Living and loving God, we come before you today with all the experiences of the last week fresh in our minds, grateful for your amazing grace, thankful for your continuing provision, encouraged by the thought of your presence with us, but also bewildered by the difficulties we've encountered, wounded by some of the things that have been said and done to us by others nervous about what lies ahead. Please accept our heartfelt praise and worship for your greatness and majesty, for your care and compassion, but also hear our prayers for ourselves and for your world. May our encounter with you, together over the internet this morning, bring glory to you and be the means of building us up to serve you more faithfully in the week ahead. We pray in the name of Jesus, the word of life. Amen. And let's join our voices together as we say the words of the prayer that unites us as followers of Jesus, the Lord's Prayer. Again, the words are on the screen if you need them. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. One of the effects of the pandemic uh, over the past year has been to make many of us lose our bearings, really, in terms of the calendar. We've missed many of the usual milestones that mark out the changing seasons, the festivals and celebrations, the progress of the church's year. But we're now in Lent, as you probably do know, and uh, Easter is approaching. And with Easter comes the annual Schools Week, which we put on in association with Litchfield Christian Schools Work Trust. That obviously can't happen in the way that it usually does, but it's going to be going ahead rather differently this year. And here's Sally to tell us a bit more about it. Sally. Um, good morning. Um, I just want to talk to you for a couple of minutes about uh, Easter Schools Week. And as you probably realised, it's going to be an online resource again, um, a bit a bit like the Christmas one was. Um, and so you're probably expecting that the next thing I will do is to ask you for money, but uh, I'm not going to do that. Please don't give us your money. 
uh, mainly because at Christmas you were so generous that we had enough money not only to buy comics for Christmas, but also um, additional comics for Easter, uh, so that even more children can, than usual can have the comics and we'll still have enough left for next Christmas as well. So thank you very much for that generosity and it was a real encouragement to us. Um, when I thought about what I wanted to say to you this, uh, this morning about Schools Week, uh, it chimed very well with uh, this morning's reading from Colossians, actually. Um, and, and in that reading, Paul starts off by mentioning a friend of his called Tychicus, uh, who he describes as his fellow servant in the Lord. And then he goes on to mention other friends, all with challenging names, who he refers to as co-workers in the Kingdom of God. Um, and I want to just give thanks and praise, really, for all the people who have got involved in um, all the preparation that's gone into uh, Easter Schools Week and to, to, to thank them and to thank God for all their talents and abilities and their willingness to give their time and their service. And um, it, it's just been such a privilege to uh, work with them and a privilege to see uh, what God's been doing and to, to, to be able to share with God in what he's doing. Um, so that's all for thanks and praise. And then next, uh, Paul mentions another friend, Epaphras, and he talks about him wrestling in prayer. And um, that's what I want to ask all of us to do, uh, really. Uh, but first of all, again, more thanks because um, from the from the very first uh, when we've been preparing this, the Saturday morning community prayer group have uh, prayed it all through with us each stage of the preparation, and that has been a real support and a real encouragement. So thank you to them, and um, I'm asking really if if all of you now would pray for Schools Week. Um, the children go back to school on Monday and the resources will be up on the Litchfield Christian Schools Work website on Monday and so they have three weeks until Easter to access those resources. So please pray that they will be really well used and that the children and the staff will engage um, with them and not just Litchfield children but uh, further afield as well. And um, Anne has put some prayer pointers up for you on um, the Facebook page and also in this month's vision to, to help you with that. Um, and lastly, Paul says rather cryptically at the end of the letter, remember my chains. And um, one of the stories really of the uh, pandemic has been the story of physical restriction and, and the frustrations that that has brought us. Um, but although we have been physically hindered from doing Schools Week in the church, uh, God has not been hindered and it, we've, as a result, had this much greater opportunity to reach more people and to look at the story in more depth. So that's been amazing to see. Um, and, and lastly, I would just like to encourage you really um, to take a look at the resources and Obviously, you can go on the, on the website and, and look at what's there, um, but you might like to um, watch the monologues, which you can, you can either, uh, there'll be links for them on the, the Facebook page and also uh, on the, the Wade Street Church YouTube channel. Um, and, and I really would encourage you um, to watch those because although they were written primarily for the schools, they are, I would say, suitable for anybody. The, um, there's nothing simplistic about the language, there's nothing patronising about it, um, there's nothing that compromises the truth of the gospel, and the, the acting is superb. Um, so I invite you to walk through the story with us this Easter, to, um, to start off with uh, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, seen through the eyes of Caiaphas, and then um, to, to experience the Last Supper with John and the other disciples, um, to walk with Simon of Cyrene to Golgotha, to try and understand Jesus' trial and his burial through the eyes of Pilate, and to witness the resurrection with Thomas and Mary and Peter, and um, to use that really as part of your own personal preparation for Easter. 
And that's it. Thank you. Well, thanks very much for that, Sally. That was great. That really helps us. And uh, we hope that you will continue to pray, all of you, for what's going to be happening in the schools over the next couple of weeks. But let's sing once again now as the bridals lead us in our next song, preparing us to read from the Bible. Thy word. wonderful. Thank you very much, uh, Colin and Sophia and Annabel. We're going to turn to Colossians now for our Bible reading. Sally referred to it a few moments ago, and we're going to read the last little section of this letter from Paul to the Christians in Colossae, which we've been working our way through over the past few weeks. Paul's kind of signing off here, and he mentions a lot of names, uh, some of which are quite challenging, as Sally uh, has mentioned, so we had to find someone articulate and intelligent to read it for us. So over to Scotch Orchard where Bryony Narain is going to read to us now from Colossians chapter 4 verses 7 to 18. Tychicus will tell you all the news about me. He is a dear brother, a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. I am sending him to you for the express purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. He is coming with Anisimus, our faithful and dear brother who is one of you. They will tell you everything that is happening here. My fellow prisoner, Aristarchus, sends you his greetings, as does Mark, the, co the cousin of Barnabas. You have received instructions about him. If he comes to you, welcome him. Jesus, who is also called Justice, sends his greetings. These are the only Jews among my fellow workers for the kingdom of God, and they have proved a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, sends his greetings. He is always wrestling in prayer for you, that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. I vouch for him and he is working hard for you and for those at Laodicea and Hierapolis. Our dear friend Luke, the doctor, and Demas send greetings. 
give my greetings to the brothers at Laodicea and to Nympha and the church at her, in her house. After this letter has been read to you, see that it is also read in the church of the Laodiceans and that you in turn read the letter from Laodicea. Tell Archippus, see to it that you complete the work you have received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting in my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. Well, thank you very much for that, Bryony, and well done with all those names. We're going to have a closer look at that passage now, but first, let's pray. Loving God, open our ears to hear your words, open our eyes to see your ways, and open our hearts and minds to know how to respond. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, when you go to the cinema, if you can remember what that was like, at the end of the film, most people get up, don't they, and hurry off out of the auditorium. But there's very often one person still sitting there watching the credits roll down, often with his wife standing impatiently over him and rattling the car keys. He usually does the same at the end of television programmes, and uh, he reads every name on the album cover of any new CD that he buys. That person, I have to confess, is me. I find the credits fascinating as I try to discover who played that little Mellotron piece towards the end of track three, or wonder what the best boy and chief grip get up to, or ponder whether I indeed need to know what the intimacy coach gets involved in. And the endings of most of Paul's letters are a bit like the credits of a film or TV show or CD, in that they list a number of the people who have some part to play in Paul's ministry either with him, where he is, writing, or at the receiving end of his letter. So, greetings to them. And this letter to the Colossians is no exception. Paul has written this letter to the new Christians in the town of Colossae, in, in what is now Turkey, to help them develop in their faith, following their response to the preaching of his friend Epaphras. He's particularly concerned that they should keep Jesus and his grace at the heart of all that they do and not be sidetracked by the teachings of those who want to add extra rules and regulations to the simple truth of the gospel or who want to push the idea of secret knowledge that's accessible to only a few or who want to see Jesus as just another of the spiritual beings that they know from their old pagan ways. And he's made it very clear that following Jesus means living out his teaching in a way that is very often completely counter to the values of the culture of the world around them. And that needs to be done in every situation, in the home and the workplace, as much as anywhere else. And it all needs to be undergirded, as we saw last time, by persistent and passionate prayer, so that they can make the most of every opportunity they get to share the good news about Jesus. And then he mentions a few names. He brings up the credits, if you like. We'll have a look at each of these people in a few moments. But before we do, just a couple of more general things about these verses. This is where we see that the gospel involves real people. These are named individuals who have each been affected by the teaching of Jesus and whose lives are now, on the whole, devoted to living out the message themselves. They're a very diverse bunch. There's Jews and Gentiles, men and women, professionals and others, a slave and some free men, reliable colleagues and those who mess things up. It's a group of people such as you'd find in any church and they all have their part to play, as Sally was saying earlier on. It fits in as well with what Ruth Tinsdale prayed about last Sunday in our service, if you cast your mind back. She prayed that God would help us not just make allowances for our differences, but cherish our differences, knowing that each member of the church is an essential part of the body, loved and cherished by God for who they are. William Barclay, we have uh, referred to him quite a few times as we've been looking at uh, Colossians in his sort of commentary called the Daily Study Bible. He notes uh, in what he says about this passage that this these names refer to what he calls the heroes of the faith. But I take issue with that, not something I would often do with the good doctor, but uh, yeah, they're not heroes of the faith. They're ordinary people with their faults and failings as well as their gifts 
and commitment. Just trying to live out their faith day by day, just like you and me. And you can see something of that as we just comment on these names that Paul mentions here. Tychicus. Tychicus was a great friend of Paul who accompanied, on, uh, accompanied him on his last visit to Jerusalem, his final visit to Jerusalem, and he took the offering that had been collected for the needy people in the church there. He is, as Paul says here, a dear brother, a faithful minister, and a fellow servant in the Lord. And on this particular occasion, he's Paul's messenger. He's the one who brings the Colossians not only the letter that Paul's written, but all the news of Paul and his ministry and what he's been doing. And with Tychicus is Onesimus, who's mentioned, or indeed, who is the subject of Paul's letter to Philemon, a very short letter that comes a bit later in the New Testament. Onesimus is a runaway slave whose master is Philemon, and Philemon's one of the congregation in Colossae. Onesimus has become a Christian and he's now returning to Philemon as a dear and faithful brother who will join his master in the church there. And then Paul mentions three men who are Jewish believers, the only Jewish people in this list actually. Aristarchus, another of Paul's usual travelling companions, who's been through a good deal with the apostle, who's ended up in prison with him on more than one occasion, Possibly he's even with Paul at the moment, as Paul is writing this from his house arrest. Aristarchus may be there as well. But he was also arrested, if you look back in Acts, after the riot in Ephesus. He was a good bloke to have around you when there was that kind of stuff going on. Mark is mentioned. Mark, the author of the second gospel, the cousin of Barnabas, and someone who caused a lot of trouble when he left Paul unexpectedly during one of Paul's preaching tours, because he wanted to go home. He was fed up with it. We don't know exactly why, but he went off home. And Paul and Barnabas argued so much about this that they actually split up, Paul and Barnabas going their separate ways. Clearly, Mark now is, is back with Paul. The broken relationship has been healed, but Mark has clearly had his struggles. And then Jesus Justus is mentioned, the only name here that is not mentioned anywhere else in the New Testament. So we actually know nothing else about him, nothing to say about Jesus Justus. But the other people who are named here by Paul are all Gentiles, an indication of the spread of the gospel message out into Europe. Epaphras has already been mentioned uh, several times in this letter, as he's the one whose preaching helped to start the church in Colossae, who continues to pray fervently for them and work hard for them and the other churches in the nearby towns of Hierapolis and Laodicea. Then there's Luke, who is a doctor and a trusted friend of Paul, someone who accompanied the apostle on his missionary journeys and no doubt put his professional skills to the service of the travelling band of evangelists. Demas is also mentioned, but you'll notice there's no comment here about him. He is mentioned in Paul's letter to Philemon, and he's also mentioned in 2 Timothy 4 and verse 10, where Paul there notes that Demas loved the world and deserted him. He went back to Thessalonica, where he'd come from, and it seems gave up the faith. And then Paul sent his greetings to the Christians in nearby Laodicea, who were to read this letter once the Colossians had finished with it. We know about the Laodiceans from a letter to them which is part of Revelation, written a little while after this, so all sorts of things have happened in that time, but we discover that they too, the Laodiceans, went a bit cold on the faith. The church there lost its deep commitment to Christ. And then Paul greets Nympha, who hosted, possibly helped lead, the church which met in her house. Remember, the churches didn't have any formal buildings at this time. They weren't churches as we would know them, church buildings. People met in, in the houses of, of folk in the congregation. And the name Nympha can either be a men's name or a woman's name, depending on where you put the accent in Greek. But the pronoun her, her house, suggests this was indeed a woman. And finally, Paul mentions Archippus, who's another person mentioned in his letter to Philemon. And from the context there, many people think he was part of Philemon's household. Very likely, according to many scholars, his son. 
So Archippus may have been one of the, the younger members of the church in Colossae, not, not a youth as such, because some scholars have suggested too he might have been helping Epaphras lead the church, but that's Archippus. And there you have it. We went through that list so we could see what a diverse group they were. But some of them made up this growing and lively church in the town of Colossae, and some of them were involved in the wider task of spreading the gospel around the Eastern Mediterranean. Each had a part to play, and each one was able to use his or her God-given gifts in that enterprise. Some were great friends of Paul, as well as valued colleagues, and some let him down badly but in the case of Mark, we're able to make a new start and continue to be used by God in his mission, used very powerfully, if you think about his writing of the gospel that bears his name. And then right at the very end of this letter, the last little sentence here, Paul adds his own personal greeting. The bulk of the letter would have been dictated by Paul, written down by one of his friends, possibly Tychicus or Aristarchus, who were with him. But Paul says here he's signing it himself, no doubt as a recognition of his love for these Colossian Christians. But the words I want to leave with you this morning as we come to the end of our reflections on this letter are the words that Paul addresses to Archippus in verse 17, this sort of penultimate uh, sentence, really, of this letter, where he says to him, see to it that you complete the work you have received from the Lord. See to it that you complete the work you've received from the Lord. Now at this stage, Demas hasn't left Paul. The Laodiceans are still going all out for Jesus. So he won't have them in mind. So this isn't written as a kind of warning in the light of that to Archippus. Nor is it, I believe, a rebuke, as some scholars have said, you know, get on and finish what you're supposed to do kind of thing. That's not what it's about, I don't think. This is a word of encouragement. And we should all hear it as that, as we hear the Spirit's voice coming to us through these ancient words today. Paul often tries to encourage his friends and colleagues and readers and fellow Christians to keep going in the task that God has given them. Because it's a real privilege to be involved in the mission of God, in the proclamation of his kingdom. It is indeed work you have received from the Lord. God wants you involved in this. He trusts you to get on and do what you can. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever your background, ethnicity, gender, age or whatever, there is something for you to do and God will help you to do it if you're committed to him and his ways. Whether it's leading an alpha group, sorting out snack packs, helping with schools week, providing a listening ear for someone who's struggling, praying for particular projects or whatever. In Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, <coughs> Paul actually writes that God will complete his work in you. I'm confident of this, he writes to the Philippians, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. You're not alone. God's Holy Spirit is at work in you. And you stand in the tradition of men and women of God who have been used by him down through the centuries, from Nympha, who just used her house, Epaphras, who preached, Aristarchus, who stood by Paul in difficult times, Onesimus, who lived out his Christian faith in his own strange circumstances as a slave or whatever, and all the way down from those people to today. You are surrounded by, supported by, upheld in prayer by a whole host of fellow Christians who make up the local church, just as these good folk in Colossae did. So keep Jesus at the heart of all you believe, all you say and all you do. And do all that you can to support and pray for those around you who are sharing in that task of proclaiming the gospel. And as Paul says with his last words of this letter, grace be with you. And prayer is always an integral part of Paul's encouragement to live out the message of Jesus Christ. So we're going to do that now as Colin Davis leads us from his home in Kings Bromley. Over to you, Colin, as we pray. Father God, we ask you to hear our prayers. The Bible teaches us that we are made in your image. As the Trinity God, you represent the original community. 
Help us to learn from that, from you, Lord God. As we continue to face up to the COVID-19 pandemic, help us to recognise the lessons we are all learning about the value of community. Both the value of being in a community and the contributions we make to the lives of our fellow human beings within that community. As we recognise that none of us in our world will be safe from this virus until we are all safe from it, and as we follow up on the World Day of Prayer, Lord, hear our prayers for the world community to work together in vaccinating everyone, not just those in the richer countries who can afford it. Lord, we pray that initiatives such as COVAX by the World Health Organization bring the distribution of vaccines to those parts of the world that need it the most, but can afford it the least such as the majority of the countries in Africa and South America. Father God, we ask you to bring the power of your Holy Spirit to the troubles in Myanmar. Lord, bring the lessons in serving others contained in the life of our, your son, Jesus Christ, to the military rulers who have taken control in that country. Help them to recognise that their main duty in leading the people of Myanmar is to serve the needs of the population, not simply to take power for their own selfish personal reasons. Lord God, if it serves your purpose, help the leaders recognise the will of the people as expressed in their recent election. Focusing on our own country, Lord, we give thanks for the working together of our government leaders, our National Health Service, our armed forces and volunteers from all walks of life as they have come together in vaccinating our population against the COVID virus. We pay, pray that you grant them the strength and resilience to complete the vaccination programme. We also give thanks to those people throughout our country who are freely giving of their time to those in their local areas who are excluded from their communities due to health, age, living alone, or a combination of all three. We pray that their exa example will be an inspiration to all of us. Lord, we give thanks that despite the restrictions of the pandemic, the Easter Schools Week will still go ahead this year, albeit in a different form. We are particularly thankful that the Scripture Union Easter comics are still being produced to bring the Easter story to Year 5 and Year 6 pupils within the Litchfield community. It is a wonderful example of how Christians can best serve the communities in which they live by sharing the story of Jesus' resurrection and our salvation. As Christians, we have been given the wonderful gift of being exposed to and choosing to accept a relationship with Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour. As we in Wade Street see the value of working within and serving our local area, Father God, help us to provide our friends, acquaintances, family and community members with the ultimate service by bringing the good news of Jesus Christ into their lives. Many of us during the pandemic have recognised even more how fulfilling it is to serve the community in which we live. So Lord, we pray for the courage, compassion and opportunity to go further in this service in order to grow your kingdom by giving others the chance to meet with their saviour and to learn about the sure and certain hope of an eternal future with the one true God. Father, we ask you to hear our prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, very many thanks, as always, for, for those prayers, uh, Colin, and from one Colin to another, as Colin Bridal now leads us in a final song with his daughters Annabelle and Sophia. It's a reminder that it is in Jesus' name that we find the power we need to live as he wants. Your name is is power.
Well, thank you very much indeed uh, for that and indeed for all the music today, Colin, uh, Sophia and Annabelle. Uh, and thanks to Colin Davies too and to Sally and to Bryony for their input as well. We're still operating online for Sunday services and for most other things at the moment. So uh, have a look at our website if you want to find out exactly what's happening. Next Sunday is Mothering Sunday. So our children and young people will be leading our worship so have a look at the church website or read the weekly notices for information. Uh, and that will also be available on DVD for those who prefer it. And the following week's communion service, that's a fortnight today, March the 21st, will be on Zoom. We're going to experiment a little bit with that, so look out for details of that and uh, we'll see how that goes. We do very much hope it won't be too long now before we're able to have some face-to-face -face contact once again. We'll let you know when that's likely to happen. It certainly won't be before the end of March, but in the meantime, please do all that you can to keep to the guidance and make sure you get your vaccination when it's offered to you. So when we come back together again, it will be in the safest possible context. Uh, if you're a church member, please remember it's our annual general meeting that's going to be held this year on Zoom at uh, 7.45 this Wednesday, the 10th of March. At the last meeting, uh, we decided to delay the election of elders until our June meeting. But if you are interested in standing uh, as an elder or thinking of nominating someone for that and would like any information, please have a word with me or with one of the, uh, the current elders. And this week too is prayer focus week, the week in the month where as a congregation we try and focus our prayers on a particular subject and we're praying for our outreach and evangelism this month. There's a leaflet with some prayer pointers uh, on Facebook or you may get it via the email link and if you want to join us so we can pray together over Zoom uh, that will be happening this week, Thursday, Thursday the 11th at seven o'clock. Look out for the joining details on Facebook. And now uh, a final prayer as we close. <clears throat> Whoever we are, Lord, and wherever we find ourselves this week, may we be ready to be used by you in pointing others to Jesus Christ by our words, our actions, 
and our attitudes. Grant us wisdom and grace in all that we do, and may we bring glory to you alone. And now may the peace of the Lord go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Well, thank you very much for joining us this morning. We hope uh, that you have uh, a good week and we hope you're able to join us again next time. Goodbye.